the tracing tools in Illustrator, specifically the pen tool and um, all the ways we can modify those lines. Uh, this is kind of the second jump in skill for Illustrator. So I'm going to open Illustrator, get a new file, same as last time, 8.5 by 11. I am going to leave mine vertical. All right, again, Command plus, Command minus, Command zero. Command R gives us our rulers. I'm going to go ahead and add in my margin guides. Okay, so my margin guides are in there. Can make sure my yep, my guides are locked. So I don't have to worry about that. Now, first new thing. Today we're going to be using the pen tool, which looks like a little fountain pen over here. Uh, you can also just tap the P key on your keyboard. P is in Paul. P key. Now what's going to happen is those anchor points that we used last time, clicking once gives you one. If I just click without holding the mouse down, it's just going to give me a straight line. Then I can keep doing that and keep doing that until I get a shape. Now, you may have noticed that my cursor changed. If you notice, see how there's a little circle to the bottom right of my cursor? That little circle just means that we're going to complete this curve. Go ahead and do that. Look at that. Good to go. Um, if I hover over this path, there's a little plus in the bottom right hand of, of my cursor that allows me to add control points to this path. It allows me to add anchors to this path. Uh, and I'll say anchors are control points, but they're interchangeable with the same thing as far as I care. But in Illustrator, they're called anchors. Um, if I hover over an anchor, it will turn into a minus, and I can get rid of that. So you can use that as an editing tool. Uh, there is a way to force those two commands. If we come over here, click and hold. We get the add anchor point, delete anchor point, and convert anchor point tool. Uh, so we can do those things individually. And if you notice, they are plus and minus for these two. And P for this one, you won't be using this one enough to remember that command or to need to remember that command. All right, so that's how I make rectilinear objects, objects that are, you know, straight edged. I'm going to select both of these, delete them. Um, also, just before I move on, we do this. Our white arrow tool works exactly the same. Once we've finished this and completed our line, it is exactly the same as all the shapes we made the other day. It will work identically, just like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And I'm going to go to no fill because it bothers me. All right, so now that's clicking once, and clicking once gives us a straight line. But we have more stuff than straight lines in the world, so we don't want that. I'm going to delete that. Click once. Now, to get an arc, what I'm going to do is click and hold. And as I drag, you can see the handlebars around that anchor point, and it gives me an arc. Now, if you notice, there's a handlebar going backwards, which says, you know, this line is going to start at this point, end at that point, and try to go this direction. Well, the same thing will happen forwards. If I just click once, this handlebar is going to influence my line. So if I click once, the only influence on the shape of this line is the two points that I made, and this one handlebar. Well, we can do more than that. I'm going to undo. It would help if I remembered what computer I'm on. I'm going to undo that. Now I'm going to show you a line that's affected by two handlebars. So if I click once, it's just this one handlebar and the two points. If I click and hold, now I get another set of handlebars. Now this is very interesting because we're starting our line here, we are ending our line here, and we are being affected by two separate ha handlebars. The closer the line is to this point, the more it will be affected by this handlebar. 
the closer the line is to this point, the more it will be affected by this handlebar. So we can kind of see that we're getting an S-shaped curve out of this. So we can start to see how we might make very complex objects with these tools. Now, what happens if I want to just make a straight line off of here, right? I don't want my line to go in. I want to make a straight line off of here. Well, I find the easiest way to do that is if I hold the Command key, it will turn my cursor back into either the Selection tool or the Direct Selection tool, depending on which one was the last one I used, and then I can click off. Just click away and do that, and then when you come back, you're free. Now I can make a sharp turn just fine. When I hover over this, see the line to the bottom right hand side of my pen? That tells me that I'm going to continue that line. If I go a little bit away from that, it's a brand new line. It's the X. It gives me a brand new line. Now that line might look continuous, but if I tried to fill this shape, it would not work. It does not count as one contiguous edge line. Uh, so I do not want that command click and that gets me free again. I can use this to fill my line. This is a complete curve. Click, get out. Now I have uh, my pen tool. I have the basics of the pen tool. Now once I've made these, again, any of the tools we've used last time work just fine. Let me clear these really quickly. I can make Make that shape, and then let's do shape like that. I can do whatever shape that I want. Let me go ahead and fill both of these. Okay, so both of these are filled shapes. We can see the difference. So I can do these just like we did last time. I'm going to go get my Pathfinder window, select both and I can do Pathfinder just like we did during last week. All right, I'm gonna delete that object, get, get clean. I'm gonna leave my Pathfinder up since I have it. I like that very much. Another new tool we are going to learn is layers. Layers are hiding from me. They are over here, two little diamonds. This is your layers menu. Layer one will be your standard menu. Uh, you can double click on these, you can name it, you can also change the color of it and it changes this little color here and it changes your highlight color for that thing as well. Uh, I am not going to rename this right now because we will have reasons for naming our layers. Uh, one thing I do not want to see in your files is layer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is not terrifically useful. If you make a new layer, there needs to be a reason, right? Design is about reasons. Uh, when you make a new layer, that layer needs to be titled what it holds because you will have 20 plus layers and you will forget what they are for and you will be sad when you lose objects. These two spaces here, the I symbol, allows you to see that layer. If you turn it off, can't see it. Turn it on, you can see it. If you notice, the guides went away as well, right? Guides went away. If I draw an object and hide that layer, the object goes away. It's still there, but it goes, it is vis visually not there. This is the lock, comes up with a little lock icon. That just means that I can't affect anything on this layer. So let me get that circle back. Lock. Now if you look, it even makes my cursor. It says no draw, you cannot write on this layer. Uh, if I had more than one layer, then it would just let me work on whichever layer I had selected that was not locked. So I'm going to unlock that, get rid of my circle. Now what I'm going to do is that what we want to do with the pen tool, and I think probably the best way to, to practice the pen tool is to trace an object. Uh, for your projects, I'll have you do both um, drawn objects and photographs. The reason I want you to start with a drawn object, and the reason I'm going to start with a drawn object, is it's very important to realize why artists put lines where they do. So why does an artist choose that place to put a line? 
and following somebody else's art is an easy way to kind of start to figure out why are these lines where they are uh, and kind of gets you a feel for the style. Then when you move to uh, tracing photographs, then you can kind of say, oh, this is where a shadow is, this is where a hard line should go. A hard line should not go there because it'll make the face look weird or it'll make whatever you're drawing look strange. So I have my layers here. Uh, the only additional things are these little buttons down here and the big ones are just new layer, which is right there, and delete layer, which is this one right here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a second layer. I select my first layer though. Now what I'm going to do, file place, go to desktop. I've already pulled down some images. I'm going to trace a drawing. Now if you notice, this is an extremely low res image, but that is okay. Why are you being terrible? So I'm just kind of arbitrarily scaling this image because I have my guidelines, so I know I don't want my art to extend past there, but all I really want is this character with his little hood. I do not want this character, so I'm not going to worry about where that character shows up on the page. I just want this one. I can scale stuff later, but I kind of like designing with the scale in mind at the beginning. Um, sorry about that. And click off, deselects. Uh, if you notice, when I hover over this or when I have it selected, an image has a big X across it. That means that Illustrator doesn't want to mess with anything inside this image. It's not what Illustrator's for. It doesn't like to do things inside the image. If we want to do stuff to images, we're going to do that in Photoshop. Illustrator wants to treat this like a box that this image lives in, and you're allowed to play with the box, but you're not allowed to play with the image inside of it. Uh, so just realize that that's what that X is for kind of indicating, I guess. All right, now, now we know what layer one is. Layer one is my original. Original image. All right, now my layer two is going to be my trace. And one thing we do when we trace an image in real life is if you, you put your image down you put a piece of paper on top, and if you're just sitting there tracing that image, if you get up, or if the wind blows, or if you move, you can lose where your trace is on, on the board. Right? You can lose where your trace is uh, compared to the original image. So the way we're going to avoid that is to lock the layer. Now we're going to work on our trace. So we have this layer unlocked, we have our bottom layer kind of quote unquote taped down, and it won't move. See, I can't grab or move that image, so I won't mess up my trace. I'm going to zoom way, way in. You can see the graininess, and that's okay, because we're going to replace all this art. I'm going to pen tool, and one thing I like doing when I'm doing my traces, I like not having fill, because fill is just very distracting. So I just make sure I have stroke and no fill. Get my pen tool. Draw this line. Let's see if I can do that without zooming out. Yes, I can. Now, I've just made that line. But when I click off, right, I can go get my black arrow tool or I can just hold command, click. It's gone. Right? I can't see what I've drawn. It's still there. See, if I move it off, that black line is still there. But I can't see it because I'm tracing black over black. That's no good. So, the way we're going to deal with that is kind of making it more like tracing paper. Right? A, tra a piece of tracing paper um, makes it so that the blacks in the original kind of turn gray, right? Because you can't see them all the way through the tra tracing paper. So what we're going to do is unlock this layer, grab our image, go to transparency, which is these two little circles overlapping, I'm going to drop the opacity. I like mine mid 60%. Kind of just depends on what you're drawing and what you like looking at. This, to me, looks right. So that's what I'm going to do. Because again, these tools are entirely for you to know 
or for you to be good at this, for you to figure out what works for you. All right, so I'm gonna lock that original image again, go back to my trace. I can put this away if I want. Probably not gonna play with Pathfinder, so I can put that away as well. I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit. And now, pen tool, click once. This section looks like a pretty straight line to me, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I've left these on, but see these little green lines that are popping up? These little green lines are auto guides, and they are not my favorite. So we can actually go into preferences and get rid of those. If they're bothering us, we can get rid of those. They're called smart guides, they're right here. And I just like taking them all off. Um, some of these might be useful for you, some of them might not. I don't like having them. I'm going to turn them all off for now. See, if I hover, I can continue this line. Now you can see those green lines are not popping up and not bothering me. Now, I cannot continue around his head, right? No matter what I do, let's say I want to make this straight. I'm never going to be able to stretch this to make it fit. It's always going to loop out like this. Remember, spacebar moves us around the page. Um, it's always going to loop out like this because of how strong this handlebar is. So I'm going to Command Z. And then what I can do is Command, click off, come back, click on this line, and then I can make a very nice pretty arc that does what I want. Now a lot of this is kind of like a puzzle of figuring out exactly where you can put points. Let me see if I can get this one. See, that handlebar is just too strong. Can't do that one. Command Z, click off, click back. Some things like ovals are gonna trace a little bit easier. I didn't need as much foolishness as some of the other ones. I can see that this handlebar is going to take me a place I don't want to go. So another option is I can click this and keep going. So you can command click off or you can click back on this point. That's what I just did right there. Of course I did the line poorly. So I'm going to do it better. Uh, that's a little bit better. So there's two options for that. I'm going to make a sharp corner. You can command click off. Right, command click away. Or you can click on this point and then it will let you leave at whatever angle you like. I prefer the command click and then clicking back just because then it's the same thing to end a line and go do something else as it is to do a different kind of line and it's just easier for me to remember. Now you'll notice this eye is essentially a circle. So is his little antenna thing. So what I'm going to do is instead of taking all the time to draw those, I'm just going to use my fancy circle tools from last class. And I'm just going to pop some perfect circles on there. Now, those perfect circles are, of course, going to look weird. If you want this kind of wobbly art, then you should make the wobbly art. If you are cool with those just being circles, then just make them circles. That's what I just did. Now all I'm doing is just getting places that are going to need or want outlines. See here I'm going to want a sharp, so command click. I'm 
So I'm not going to do, say, this line right here because there's not a drawn line there. That's going to be a difference between light and shadow, uh, but not a drawn edge line. So I'm not going to worry about that. Now, one thing you might notice is that I'm getting very few points. I can do these with very few points because I have a lot of practice doing it. One thing that you are probably going to try to do, that does not look good, so we're not going to do that. One thing that a lot of people when they're starting this do, is they do this. They make a bunch of very tiny straight lines. Well, that could be straight. They make a bunch of very tiny straight straight lines. Now, at this distance, that looks fine. But when we zoom in on that art, see how janky that looks? Terrible. Terrible. What we want it to look like is these nice smooth arcs. Right? We want sharp edges where there's sharp edges. We do not want to have little sharp pieces in places we don't want. That needs to be his, like, right, that's his belly. It needs to be this smooth shape. It does not need to be jaggedy. Just like that. Get rid of it. There's a little bit of a negative there. This is also an example of where you can add a little bit of flourish if you think something should be a little di different, right? This is your version of this thing. If you need to change it, change it. An example, an arc like this should never take more than these two points. If there's a kink in it like this, that's when you want to add additional points. All right, I'm going to go silent and uh, fast forward the rest of this. All right, so that looks like the components of the art that I want. I've done every black line, I think. Oh, never mind, I missed one. I'm gonna do this little C shape right here. One thing to note is I am not finishing all of these, and that's okay because we're not going to use these for fill. We're gonna make another layer that's just the fill components. This is just to get our trace down. So I'm gonna zoom out. Look at my art. Now, if I want to look at my art and see what I've done, I can turn the eyeball off on the original image, and I can see that I have what looks like a good trace of this object. Um, so we are going to do that. Uh, one thing we can also do with this trace is we can use some of our tools from yesterday. Sorry, not yesterday, last class. I can select any of these curves and we can change the stroke. So I might want to take all of these that are a little, you know, that are the edge pieces that are a little bit more important. 
just bump them up a little bit. I mean, I'm not really going to worry too much about the ones that are around black areas because we will fill those black, so it's a little redundant. Grab all of these. Good. A little bit more for that one. And again, this is just entirely aesthetics. This is just what looks right to you. All right, so now if we turn off, oops, sorry, if we turn off this, now we're starting to get a little bit of weight. We're starting to get a little bit of emphasis and a little bit of weight. I can also come in here and see where I've done poorly. Mm, that's a little too heavy. And one thing, we can keep playing with these, right? The nice thing about Illustrator, the nice thing about this vector art stuff is that if we decide, oh, that line needs to be a little heavier, that line needs to be a little bit lighter, it's very easy to go in at the end and just fix those things, or go in at any point and just fix those things. I am going to bump this one. There we go, that looks better. All right, we can bring back our image. You can see there's no other art that I need out of this or that I want, right? It's my drawing. I get to pick the parts that I like. Okay, so now, cool thing, we're done with our trace. Before I continue, and I should have done this before, but I didn't. And uh, this character is Gur from Invader Zim. So I'm going to call this file trace Gur. I'm going to save it. Now I can hit Command S. Oop, no, we're not. Okay, now I can hit Command S and I can save my file whenever I need to. So my trace is done. I have my original image, but what's missing? Well, I have no color. Also, we have big, you know, areas of black even that are not filled in. So I want to get those areas in there. I'm, it kind of just depends on how I'm feeling as to which colors I do first. Uh, in this case, I think I want to do the black first. So we're going to go ahead and do the black. And the way we're going to do this, we're not going to do this on any of our layers, right? This is our original image. This is our trace. We're done with our trace. So now we're starting to do color and stuff. So what I'm going to call this layer so I'm going to call this layer solid black. Now, if you're working on a more complicated object, you might want to call these things shadows or highlights, or if you're doing a car, maybe like you could have one layer that's just all the art for the grill or something like that, and you'd want to name those things appropriately. I'm going to call this one solid black. Uh, you could go in, you know, change this to black if you wanted to, to kind of remind yourself what colors on each layer, but I kind of, I generally just let Illustrator pick these because, I don't know, that it doesn't work for me, but if it works for you, you should definitely do it. All right, so our solid black areas, we have a few. I'm gonna zoom in. So our solid black areas are definitely inside this eyeball. Now, we're going to have a problem. Actually, solid black is not a good start for this. I'm going to make another layer, and I'm going to do um, green. I'm going to lock my solid black so I don't accidentally mess with that, but I want to show you a problem that we're going to have. So this whole sweater, I'm going to make one green color, which is going to be this I don't know, pea green, I guess. And I know that this sounds redundant, but we're going to retrace all of this. We're going to retrace all of this. The reason we're going to do this is because, again, sometimes we want to have color in different places from where we have our black lines. And there's going to be some kinds of art where you don't want to have the black lines at all. 
right? You, you could do this whole project without having any black lines. Now you can see that this is going to cut into my guy's face right there. And that's not going to be great. I don't like that. Command Z. Click off. Click back on. Now, when we're doing the color fill sections, we do need to make sure that this, this line is contiguous because we're going to do a fill on this. And it doesn't really matter if this line is that good as long as it falls inside our trace, right? So if you have really thin, very light traces, then you need to be much more careful with your coloring. Uh, if you have thick, heavy, cartoonish lines, like these ones, then you can be a little bit more, you know, free with it. And some people will say, well, why don't you just use the fill command? Well, because my trace is not solid shapes, for one. And two, again, we cannot have colors that are separate from our traces then. And that's no fun. That just takes away our creativity. One thing to note is I am able to do this as one contiguous shape just because of the, you know, the shape of this guy. But if I wasn't, I could totally do this in a bunch of different shapes and layer them over, and that would be just fine. Then I can see that my start point is right there. I can do that. Now, so I have this whole contiguous nice shape that's all the green. I'm going to take my black stroke line off. I don't want that. I'm going to go pick a green. Hmm. It's kind of a light green, a little yellower than that, maybe. I think I'm going to go with that color right there. Oh, no! There we go. All right. So, we just destroyed our trace. It's gone. Gone forever. Doomed. Right? I cannot see my all that work that I just did. It's gone. But what I can do, because I'm clever, is I know that these layers are all separate. So my trace is okay, but what I need to have happen is I need my trace to be on top of this green, right? So if I layer my pieces of, of, of construction paper, I only see the ones that are on top. So I need my trace to be on top, or I should say I need my green to be underneath my trace. I'm gonna click and drag. That allows me to rearrange these, and I'm gonna drop it right there. Now my trace is on top of this green. I'm going to do the same thing with my solid black. Generally what I like to do is I have my bigger areas of color and then I will have the highlights and shadows sitting on top of that. So I'll trace out this big area of color. Then I'll go in and I will add in these areas of shadow as a separate layer on top of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer I'm going to hide it because I've, you know, I've done what I need to do with that green. I'm going to go back to the solid black, unlock that, that unlock that layer. And now, I'm going to trace out a section of solid black. I'm going to start, let's just do this little one just to kind of have an easy start. Now, if you notice, it's already giving me this fill. Well, that fill's not great. It feels not great. We want black. Now I can pick a black like this, which is not really a great way to pick black because you're actually not at black. Much better to do this. We're at black, we're good to go. So now we have a black shape here, no stroke. If I click off of that, see, it just fills that area and does its job. Get my pen back. Now as I trace this, it's going to be constantly trying to fill the shape, which is fine. You're going to notice a problem in a moment. See that I tried too hard to make that handlebar work and it didn't. Click. Gives me my black object. Now there's a tongue in here right? We're, we're missing our little pink tongue. 
Now I can do this one of two ways. One, I can cut out that object out of the black just using the Pathfinder tool, right? I could flip this to trace, draw this thing. Let's go ahead and do that just so I can show you. Let's just so I can show you. So I can go ahead and draw this shape and say that I don't want anything inside of here to be black. So I'm just going to kind of do a rough boxing of this. So I have that shape. Now I can select that one, shift select my bigger one, go get my Pathfinder tool from last class. I can do the minus front option. I know this is on top because it was the most recent object that I made. If it wasn't on top, I could go to transform. I'm uh, sorry, not transform, arrange, and then whichever arrangement that I felt like doing. I'm going to subtract. We can see it's all one selected object. Now when I flip it, we have that as kind of a little windowed cutout. Um, and that might make our life easier because now when I do pink, I can just make a really rough sh shape of pink and it'll fit that space. I don't have to do it as precisely as this one because this will mask it essentially. All right, let's do the rest of the black. See, this would have been a mistake, because I would have started a new line there and not finished out the shape, and I would just end up with all of these janky triangle pieces. I don't want that. I'm going to find the edge of my line, and if I can't find the edge of this line, don't feel bad about selecting it and changing it to a color you can actually see to work on, and then flip it back to black, right? Because black is going to hide in all this existing art. We're going to have that same problem of trying to trace over a solid black object without changing the transparency. So I can do this in purple. And then I can come back, knock it back down. can see I made a mistake. See right here? I have a little gap. Now I could go in and I could edit that object and get rid of that gap, but I'm going to be lazy about it. I can just throw another piece of black right on top. And as long as I'm not using transparencies, that doesn't matter. Right? Two solid pieces of black are going to print two solid pieces of black. If I do transparencies or something like that, then it's going to come back to bite me. So what I might want to do is select my little you know patch component and my big component and I can use my Pathfinder tool to chunk those together and now I'm good to go. Now even if I use a transparency or something like that I'll probably be okay. And while you're doing this when you see an error you can go ahead and fix it. Like see I, I'm noticing now that this needs to be a really really thick line. Well, that's okay. I can stop what I'm doing Go get that trace. I want to make sure to lock the layers I'm not working on. Get that trace. And I'm going to, you know, bump the stroke on that. Uh, it looks like a little too much to get that to look right. Much better. Bump this one. Because now that I have that black in there, I can kind of start to see the weighting in my image. And I can see that that one was not quite enough to make me happy. That's looking much better. Now we can see, are there any other black areas that are not filled black? No, there are not. So I can turn this off. And even without the color, I can start to see that this is coming together, right? We're filling in the, we're filling in the parts that we need to fill in. We're adding to it as need be. See this green? I can add that in. We're really starting to get there. All right, I'm gonna lock my trace so I don't accidentally mess with it. The next thing I think I want to add in is this light gray area. 
the light gray area of his head. It looks like this component's actually a true white or pretty close to true white. Um, so I'm not going to do the zipper. I'm going to leave the zipper white. I'm just going to do his little neck component and this part as this gray color. I'm going to make a new one. This one is going to be named gray. All right, very clever naming. Now I'm just going to do another rough trace. See that handlebar messed up my line right there, so we're not going to do that. Click off, grab back on. All right, that looks like a good. Oop, I have this section up here as well. You can say, oh no, that's not filled with gray. Well, that's because I was doing it poorly and I have it as a black outline with no fill and right here. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that before we move on. I'm gonna pick just a nice light gray. That looks pretty good for me. You can see we did the silly thing again. This is now in the way. I can move my trace down. Traces there. You can see that this is starting to come together. I've covered over the eyes. That's okay because we can make new layers. This looks good to me up here. This is starting to look pretty good. Now is there any other gray? No there's not. So we don't need to worry about gray. Gray can be locked and can go away. If I notice, looks like I made a mistake. Right here, it looks like my lines don't quite match. That's all right. I can move these points with the white arrow tool. Just like we messed with everything last time. See, good to go. Neck is fixed. Solid. <clears throat> all right, gray is done. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's hide the gray. So now I can see that I need to do this shadow. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer. I'm going to call this one gray shadow. Again, very clever. Now, same exact plan. Now you can see that this section of this line is really important because it's not going to go under a trace, right? It doesn't go under any of these black trace sections. So it's very important that I make it look like the original. Now, I'm planning on just going ahead and putting the eye color on top of this one. So I'm not going to worry about doing the detail of cutting this back to the edge, but you totally could. I'm not going to worry about it. That's where my shadow is going to go. There's all this little wobble in here. Let's see. Do I want to do that? Yes, I guess I do. I'm just going to do a little bit of a wobble. Okay, so we have those two sections of gray. It doesn't look like there's any more gray shadows. So now what I can do is, this is already the right color, but I'm going to show you how I would do this normally. Normally I would show the base color, then you can hit the I key, we'll get you your eyedropper. You can then click that and it will make this the correct color, right? If I click these I can use their colors. 
but I want to use my original gray, and then because this is a shadow of that color, that's of course the color I want to start with. If I just went and manually found a color, it might change tone, right? I might go a little bit more blue or a little bit more green or whatever, um, and it just might not be quite right. So I like having this because it gives me these two panels, and as I change this, I can see how much more shadowed this is than the original color. I think that looks very nice, nice and subtle. Can do that. That gives me my shadow. Now, some of this is going to look a little janky, right? When we're working on this and we, you know, have these eyes destroyed like this, it's going to look a little bit weird. That's okay. We'll get there. I can now lock my gray shadow. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these three blue spots in. So we'll call these blue details. Okay. Oh. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and change this color. Ooh, it's a nice cyan already. a little brighter, but I like brighter, so I'm going to keep it. Any other blue? Nope. All right, let's see what progress we've made. I can hide, oops, not the solid black. I can hide the original image. So this is where we are. We're starting to get somewhere. We have the shadows here. The next big things we're gonna do is I'm gonna do the detail pink here and then the shadows here. Uh, I'm gonna do that sped up so we can make this video a little shorter. All right, so it looks like I've gotten through all of this that I need to do for Gur to look right. Change the weights on some of the lines. Actually, as I look at it, of course, there's always more to do. Yes, yeah, so those look much better, a little bit fat. See, probably with this line. Yes, of course it does. So. Got our little guy. If you noticed while I was working on that, I colored in the white of the eye and the white of this. Now I could just leave the background color, right? Background color, 
would be just fine. But the problem with that is, is that what if now that I've done this little guy, I want to put him on a background. Well now, I can put him on whatever background I like, and it'll look fine. So if I just make, I just make something up. Right, call this background. So let's say I just want, let's do a far too dark. Do maybe some asphalt gray color. Let's get a sky going on. Right, and this, this comic is very, uh, everything's a little crazy, so I'm not going to worry too much about making any of this square or pretty. I want to probably avoid his eye color, so let's go a little more dove blue. And because this is on top of my background, I definitely don't want that. Let's send that to back. So because I've because I added in that white, because I made sure he was solid, now it works on a background. This is now my background. I can lock it. I can hide it if I don't want it anymore. Now, this is a lot of work. Going through and doing all, all this stuff, this is a lot of work to get this. But the nice thing is, is that while I can't use this for IP purposes, if you did your own characters, they're very reusable in that these can be changed however you like. Uh, for those of you that are into shoes or toys or things like that that have colorways, you can easily recolor way these objects. So I can take my green, make sure everything else is locked. Oop, trace is unlocked. I could have damaged that. So let's say I want his sweater to be purple, right? His little his bear cut his bear costume. I guess bear costume um, to be purple. I'm gonna unlock just that layer. Now I can just select everything, right? I can just select everything, but only that's unlocked. Now I can take that. Let's say I want like a really strong fuchsia, something like that. Okay. Of course, this is still named Green Shadow, and now I've changed it, so I probably should have called it, you know, Sweater Shadow or something along those lines. Well, now I'm going to lock that layer, unlock this one, grab all those components, eyedropper that one. Now I know I want this section lighter, so I'm just going to do that. And now, in about 10 seconds, he's gone from a green sweater to a pink sweater with no real work. All right, so once you have the art, it's very easy to go in and change these minimal things. Uh, if you guys have watched the show, you can very easily make... Make sure all my stuff is locked. You can very easily make... The evil girl, I think you might have different shaped eyes as well, but I'm not sure. Okay. Can make evil girl, those red, red eyes. And it's very, very easy to do this as a colorway. Let me undo all these real quick so I can show you another option. When you have your layers open, one, let me break this out. <clears throat> you can click each of these individually to unlock or lock them, or you can actually just click drag. Just click drag all that. So now everything's unlocked. This is a very dangerous thing to do. I can grab everything. I can hold the option key to make a copy. Hold shift to keep it, you know, level. Now I can make one over here, so I don't have to mess with my original art. I can just see if this is something I want to do. And now I can click and drag and relock everything. And now I can change the colorway on this one. So I'm going to change the colorway on this one. He's going to get angry -ger. A little bit of purple in there. Okay. He gets angry -ger color. And we will change his sweater.
So now we have our different colorway GUR. I could easily change any of these colors. I could change the color of the outlines if I wanted to. All right, so now we can do things like doing this colorway. We could also make multiples of this uh, 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 this object. You could do the, um, the the Marilyn Monroe style thing with the many different colored pan uh, panels that are all color changed. Uh, it's just a very easy option for being able to edit things. Uh, if you were going to do something like clothing design or shoe design, this is also a really easy way. You can trace the shoe, try it in all sorts of different colors, and see what looks good. Um, that's this is definitely an all option. It doesn't have to be you know something like cartoons every time. It can be something more complicated. Uh, for this project, what I would like you to do is to find a scene, a cartoon scene, multiple characters in it, just kind of like this one, kind of like this one, multiple characters in it. And I would like you to find one that has a background. So just a screenshot out of a TV show or something like that would, would be great. And that's going to give you the practice. And this is definitely one of those practice things. Uh, you can see that the number of tools that I used was very limited. But being good at this and being fast at this is very important. So your project for this, find a scene out of a cartoon with multiple characters and a reasonably complicated background. And then trace that to this quality what you see here right it doesn't need to be anything more than what I've done here but at least to this quality with all of these layers 